Hi everyone, I'm Sir Mel and welcome to Mathematics in the Modern World. If you are new to my email channel, please don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button for more notifications. Today we're going to discuss statistics. So what is statistics? By definition, it is a branch of applied mathematics that deals with gathering, organizing, presenting, analyzing, and interpreting the collected data. So it is best described with, with these two branches, and we call it as descriptive and inferential statistics. So by the way, what are these two? When we say descriptive statistics, presenting of gathered data in a meaningful and informative way, while inferential statistics is the process of drawing conclusion and making decision on the population based on evidence obtained from a sample. So meaning to say, it talks about the collected data. When you just present it, gather it, and express, express it in a meaningful and informative way, we call it as descriptive. But if the collected data make some computation from it and able to find a result, use it to draw a conclusion and making any decision from it, we call it as inferential statistics. So here we have two new terms. We, we have population and sample. When we say population, generally consists of totality of the observations, individuals, or objects in which the investigator is interested, while the sample, it is a portion of the population. So let us put it the example in this way when we are considering the number of respondents in a given 101. If we're going to consider all the students or respondents in that class, then we call it as population. While if you just get some potential students that will best uh, use for your research, we call it as sample. So earlier, we are talking about the data. So let us have take a brief look about what is data. So when we say data, this refers to the set of observations gathered from subjects or respondents. So be mindful about this definition, the set of observations gathered from subjects or respondents. So these are some of the examples of the data. So opinion, number of students vaccinated, problems encountered in online class. So these are just some of the examples for the data. So again, data is the set of observations gathered from subjects or respondents. So let us have consider many examples from it. So let us have this picture. So let us have the social economic status of a person as part of our data. We have also the religion of an individual. We have also the affiliation like political affiliation, school affiliation, student affiliation, club affiliation, and whatsoever. We have also the gender of a person. We have also the reading of the body temperature of a COVID patient. We have also the height of a basketball player, the plate number of a particular politician, the student ID or your number. We have also the salary of a worker. And finally, we have the weight of an athlete. So these are some of examples of the data. But let us classify them because it deals with the subjects of the respondents and we call it as the variable. So what is variable? It is the differentiating property of subjects or correspondents that vary from one situation to another. So take note, it is the following are the properties, okay? I mean, it differentiates the property of subjects or correspondence that vary from one situation to another. Or, it is a characteristic that we observe as measured from every element of the universe. Okay, so this is what we call variable. Now, let us classify variable 
n to 2. We call it as qualitative variable and we have quantitative variable. So let us define first what is qualitative variable. So it expressed characteristics that cannot be measured numerically. So let us have an example. When you have a religion of a person as your variable, okay, of the given data, then we cannot tell that the being a Catholic, being a non-Catholic, or being an Islam or other religion will is uh, will be surpassed the other. However, you just simply uh, classify the person's faith about his or her religion so that is qualitative variable we have also the gender of a person being a ma man does not mean you are stronger than a woman or just that you are better than a woman but rather you just classify yourself as man woman is being or k so that's it we have also the social economic status uh, being a poor person middle class okay or the rich person we have also the salary of a worker minimum wage per month or per annum okay you're being uh, classified according to your salary rate and we have also the plate number of a car we have also the zip code of a place when you're living at Pikawian, it should be 9412 at Mizayap 9410 if you have living in the Cotabato city, that is 9600. All of them cannot be measured numerically, although they are using numbers. We have also a student ID. It could be 000, still the same. Cannot be measured numerically, though it is using numbers. And lastly, we have the political affiliation could be uh, administrative or it could be a uh, liberal party okay so or administration okay that's it that is are the different example of a data which is belongs to a qualitative variable so again qualitative variable express characteristics that cannot be measured numerically so let us have the quantitative variable are numerical and can be ordered or wrong. So meaning to say it's just an opposite of qualitative. So it's about numbers, can be quantified. So let us have an example, body temperature okay, of a particular patient. So probably you're able to know the temperature of a person by using the thermometer we have also the height of a person still it deals with numbers computation of the height okay we have also the weight of a girl of anyone still talks about number okay so we have also the score in the trinal exam we have also the age of a lady and last is the speed of a car so these are some examples of quantitative variable which are numerical and can be ordered or wrong. So again, when we say qualitative, express characteristics that cannot be measured numerically, while quantitative are numerical and can be ordered or wrong. Okay, so let us have the example or I mean classification of quantitative variable. And we have the discrete variable and the continuous variable. So let us have this example the body temperature of a patient. Now, when we say discrete is counted, continuous variable is measured. So if we're talking about the number of thermometer, then we can count it. But if we're going to know the temperature of a particular patient using the thermometer then it is a measured okay then it can be measured rather so let us have another definition discrete variable when data can only take certain values meaning to say that the data should be exact 
while continuous variable, data can take any value within a range. So meaning to say, probably the given number is in the scale or within the scale. So in this case, since the temperature can be in the range of 37 to 38, 38 to 39, or sometimes is exact, but most of the time in between of that range, then we can tell that the temperature of any body, okay, measurement, belongs to continuous variable. In short, continuous variable are measured on a scale, hence it can be expressed as fractions, decimals, integers, or percent. So, in this case, we can have 37.2, 37.3, 37.4, and so on. While discrete variable can be counted numerically, so hence, it takes a whole number value. So, let us have another example, year of birth. So, when we say year of birth, it talks about 1990s, 2000s, 2010s, and so on and so forth. If you were born to 1980 and below, you belong to Generation X. But if you are born 1980 above to 19, uh, let's say 96, you belong with the millennials. And we, if above 1996, rather, it belongs to the Generation Z. So meaning to say, if you are born in that year, it should be exact. Meaning to say, it belongs to discrete variable. Let us have another, another example, birthplace. If you were born in Philippines, you will be called be as Filipino. China, you will call be Chinese. Vietnam, you will be called as Vietnamese. So meaning to say, the birth place where you're born is exact and one so therefore it is about discrete variable another example is the weight of a girl after weighing him uh, weighing her rather so probably the result would be 65 point something or 55 point something so it in the given scale so therefore it belongs to continuous variable then we have students grade level so since we know that students grade level is about grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 so that yes, is exact so that is discrete we say time it takes to get to school probably one minute um, and two seconds if, if your house were just adjacent to the school or something like that or far it could be some five minutes and a little bit second and so on and so forth so that is not exact that's why it is a continuous variable. Distance from school and bus station could be meters or kilometers and could be 2.1 kilometers or 3.1 kilometers. So it should be continuous. And lastly, we have number of heads when flipping three coins. So probably if you, after tossing a coin or flipping a coin, so you can only possible result would be head or tail so in short as the result will be exact therefore it belongs to discrete variable so i hope you're able to gain learning or knowledge from these video presentations so i will leave leave a test for you to know whether you learn something from my presentation